Is this the first time we've had you in the man cave? I am excited to be here. Because you get to be around the, the nerds. No, seriously. You know, obviously, you know, I watch you uh, quite a bit. I'm always texting Fritzy. He introduced himself to me. How about that? We're, we're very professional around here. Yeah, okay. How many times do you think Fritzy's called you over the years? Well, normally he texts. Oh, he does. Calling me is probably not a good way to get me. Yeah, but texting. I'm going to get back to you. A couple of hundred times? Oh, yeah. Over the years? A thousand? No, no. A thousand. Uh, probably less than a hundred. Less than a hundred. Okay. But he has but he has the bat phone. You know, because I got two phones. I got a private uh, phone and I got a jackass phone. Is Fritzy on the jackass phone? No, he's got the real phone. Oh, number. I will say this. Sir Charles is always great about getting back to us yeah. and shows you how much respect he has yeah. for you and the show that he, he always in a timely fashion, he, whether he can do it or not, he'll always get back to me quickly. Uh, yes, Paul. One time, Charles, an executive at ESPN asked Fritzy for your number, and Todd would not give it to him. Well, and this is a high-level guy. First of all, let me tell you something. If he had a gave my number away, I, I would have killed him and Dan. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, wow. It's like people call you all the time. Hey, you got what's his name number? I'm like, yeah. Can I have it? <laughs> no, you can't have it. You can't have it. There's a reason why you yeah, don't yeah, have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, man, thanks for having me. It's good to see you, man. Uh, it, you, uh, Glad to have you. Wait, when you go quit having, stop being a coward and come back to Tahoe. I'd like to play golf again. Why? Well, why don't you? I, I had a, uh, some neck issues. Well, wasn't okay. able to swing. For, I, I played six times in four years. Is that what's wrong with my swing? My, <laughs> <I> got, <laughs> <I> got, <laughs> Would you clear this up, though, about your swing? Because I tell people, I got more respect for you that you're still trying to play. It's easy to play when you're playing well and you're healthy. Yeah. But, you know, you have this thing. Hit, hit you, you know, this yeah. thing. Now, did, did somebody tell you to pause at the top of your backswing? You know, Dan, I think people forget I used to be like an eight handicap. So I started trying to get better. So I taught taking all these lessons from all these. I broke 80 all the time, America, before I developed this I, thing. Let me say this firsthand. We played in Dayton, Ohio. Yes. You shot a 79, and I shot an 80 or 81. Charles beat me fair and square, and you had great touch. You played well. There was no hitch to your yeah. swing. There was no nothing. You were just, you played very good golf that so day. So I started taking all these lessons. <laughs> and they're like, the only thing, you, you need to pause. He said, when you slow the pros down, they have a slight little pause at the top. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And I started working on that, working on that. And now I can't get rid of it. And it drives me, it don't drive me that crazy. I mean, there's worse things in life than sucking at golf. I mean, as long as I get to drink and smoke a couple of cigars, I'm good. Yeah, but you you were good. I was. But that was a long time ago, Dan. I know, but you you got to that point where now you can get better. You maybe get down and shoot a 75, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I know, out. but I should have been happy breaking 80. Yes, you should have. You <laughs> because got because it, in the, back in the day, it was going to be between 78 and 83, 84, 85. I was never going to shoot worse than that. And I, I, I didn't understand the theory of life where you can only be good at one thing. And my one thing was basketball. <laughs> And then I tried to get good at golf, and then God punished me. And now, uh, yeah, you should only, you can only be good at one thing in life. Did you play Jordan for money at all? Oh, you used to play for him. Why would you play golf if you don't play it for money? Well, Mike won't play unless it's for money, right? No question. But how much, now, did, how many strokes did you get, first of all? Because Jordan is, what, a four? Uh, back when I was a good player, I think I only got like a couple of sides. Okay, so you get yeah. two aside, and he's a four in your Yeah, name. and when we pretty much, when I could play, it was pretty much even. But I tell you what, I've never been under more pressure. I apologize, <laughs> I, I apologize to Michael for saying this. Uh, so we'd be playing golf with certain people, and we'd be playing a couple hundred dollars a hole, nothing but. And he'd be playing some guy for like, a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I like, he's like, Charles, pick that up. I'm like, just put this for two hundred dollars. He's like, pick that up, Charles. Get out of my way. You're in my line. I said, well, how much is that put for? He's like, three hundred thousand dollars. I said, let me get out of your line. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, you like seriously? It was crazy, man. They were paying for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was crazy. But does he have to have that much? I mean, he's so competitive that if you're playing for a couple of hundred. That, That's chump change, we call it in the hood. Yeah. You know, I, I I never understood why they were playing for that much. I mean, because, like, 
And first of all, let's be real. He got so much money, a couple yeah. hundred thousand dollars ain't a lot to him. But even if you're playing blackjack or whatever you're doing, it feels like, hey, we're only going to be playing for 10 grand a hand. Yeah. Well, that's not enough. I think I developed that problem a few years ago. Well, when I went to Vegas, I won a million dollars. I probably won a million dollars five times, but I probably lost a million <laughs> 25 <laughs> times. So I developed this nervous thing, uh, not nervous thing, I developed this thing where I had to win a million. So I quit gambling for like two years, and I was talking to my close friends. I said, man, I sure miss gambling. They said, well, you should gamble. You just shouldn't be an idiot. And I said, and my friends have carte blanche to tell me, in it, honestly, because... The key to being successful, you have to have a good people around you. And my friend says, dude, you're just an idiot when you gamble. Like, you'll be up $600,000, and we're like, Charles, quit. Yeah. Let's go have fun. <laughs> and you're like, no, I got to get to a million. And then you lose that six hundred, and then you lose your credit. So they said, so now when I go gamble, I just go to have fun. We'll uh, have more with Charles Barkley coming up next hour. And uh, we'll try to make room for uh, more of your phone calls as well. Got our poll question. 877 3DP Show, our Twitter handle at DP Show. More with Charles Barkley right after this on the Dan Patrick Show. It's the Hall of Famer, Turner Sports, NBA, and NCAA analyst. Four games tonight, four games tomorrow. More with Sir Charles coming up in a moment. He's and some hard games to tonight. Why? Uh, that Michigan game, I got no idea who. Like, that's the beauty of this tournament. Like, I got an idea maybe in the other game, but the Michigan game. I've been studying that game since Sunday, and I got no idea who's going to win. Well, it's it's. Uh, I think Michigan is a one point underdog, so it's it's a toss up. But but trying to figure out Michigan, they've been on this mission here. They played well. Oh, stop it! They have. They played well at the end of the year. They won the Big Ten tournament, so they've been on a little bit more of a roll. They weren't a great team during the regular season. Yeah, but I, I I'm sick of people talking about. First of all, I think that coach is terrific. Coach, John Beeline. He's terrific. Yeah. And the point guard, Walden Jr., yep. is terrific. But I want them to get the credit. I don't want to hear any more uh, when they had the plane crash. Life, they, they feel no pressure because their life flashed before their eyes. That's total BS. They just are, the guys are great coach and the kids are playing great. <laughs> I, I, I'm watching television. They're like, well, these guys feel no pressure uh, because, you know, their life flashed before their eyes. I'm like, you have to think they're thinking about the plane crash. In the middle of the Louisville Was that your game? white guy impersonation there? Uh, <laughs> it felt like uh, a white guy impersonation <laughs> there. No, that's one of those talking heads on television who act like he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. You know? But it's like, <laughs> like I said, it's disrespect for the coach Beeline and Walton and the rest of those guys to act they just playing great. And the one thing I hate... They got no pressure on them uh, because right yeah, now they're playing yeah, with house yeah, money. They're play, because, yeah, yeah, they're playing with house money. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I've got house money. They nearly died. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> they, they got a second chance in life, and they're feeling nothing. Four games coming up uh, tonight on... Uh, on Is it uh, Turner and CBS, or is it just CBS? Uh, it's on CBS and uh, CBS and TBS. Oh, okay. Yeah. And TB okay. Trying to keep track of it. Uh, Charles Barkley Me too. Us. Yeah, I know you are. You know, like when we the first two days of this tournament, we're on four networks, and I feel so bad for Greg Gumble and Ernie. They're like, "What network are we on?" And they're like, "Dude," and I never worry. Like, dude, it doesn't matter if you get one wrong. You got four games going on the time. If you screw up every now and then, but Greg and Ernie are so great. I do relax. Nobody cares if you say, "Hey, we're on TBS." No, we're on TNT. I mean, no, it doesn't matter. How many scholarships did you have coming out of high school? Very few, because I think people who know my story knew I grew from 5'10 to 6'5 in one year. Because I didn't even get any office until I was a senior. Because between uh, my junior year and senior year, I grew from 5'10 to 6'5. And then, you know, because most of the offers are already off the table. And I was going to go. I made the best decision ever going to Auburn. Where where was the? Where else were you going to go? What, what school lost town? Well, my first choice... Obviously, I'm very close to my mother and grandma. My first choice was UAB, Gene Bartow. Because Birmingham is only like 20 minutes from my house. Oh, well. But uh, they made it to the Sweet 16 and had everybody coming back. And that's the reason why you didn't go to UAB? Yes. And Isn't that crazy? It, it is. How? I mean, your life may have been, it may have changed 
But it was a great Been dis- different. But I'll tell you, man, and I, everybody said this, once you go to Auburn, it's like you – and we have a, an inferiority complex because the greatest football coach in history is over in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. And so we are, we have an inferiority complex against Alabama because I do. I think Nick Saban's the greatest college football coach ever, in my opinion. But Auburn is the greatest school because once you go there, you're part of a, a family, a fraternity. And even when I go back now, it's, it's just the most amazing thing. When I travel the country, travel the world, we say, worry, go to each other. It's pretty special. But don't you say it after everything. Like, no. Yeah, I mean, Paulie, we were down at Auburn when uh... – Cam Newton was coming back to play in a game against, against Georgia. Georgia. Mm-hmm. And if somebody says, uh, hey, can I get a beer, War, War Eagle? Like, it, it, it was like everything. It, it, that's like, it's like I love you. Is that what it is? That's what, uh, War Eagle's like I love you. No, and, and I mean, and, and every, every college is different, but I, I think it just means so much. Like, Auburn's like a family, to be honest with you. So you almost went to UAB. Yeah. Wow. And then you go to... Gene Bartow was great, uh, but... I got lucky because I made the best decision going to Auburn. It's, a, it's the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. We were talking about this during the commercial break. That, how many times have you hosted Saturday Night Live? Three. Okay. And um, so who was the musical group all three times? Do you remember? Uh, you had- Nirvana. Was one. Uh, was one. Alicia Keys was one. And I can't remember the third, but i tell you this funny story about Nirvana. If you ever been to Saturday Night Live, the dressing rooms are like less than five, like, probably three feet apart. Like, as far as you can open your arms, that's how close the dressing rooms are. And I didn't know anything about Nirvana. First of all, they were fantastic. All the guys were nice, and I think Courtney was there also. But so I had people coming in and out, my friends, so I kept my dressing room open. Every time those guys from Nirvana opened their locked door, (laughs) I got like a contact high. It was like one of those big mushroom clouds came. Like, I was scared to go to the airport because I didn't want to sit out. Like, thank God, I got, I'm just driving. No, I do not go near the airport. But every time they opened up there, they, first of all, they were really nice. Just Did for the they run. know who you were? I don't know. I don't think. I, I, Kurt Cobain doesn't strike me as somebody yeah. who would have known who you are. Dave Grohl is not a big sports fan. Uh, but they were great. They were really nice. But I tell you, every time they open that door, that big mushroom cloud, like, <laughs> and I'm not a pot guy. I've only smoked pot like three times, five times in my life. And all it did was make me want to eat potato chips. Did you smoke in college? I did not. I smoked in the pros. Like, like I got a couple of teammates like, dude, try this. I'm like, all right, let me try it. And I didn't get no peace. Uh, I didn't make me, I like, all I wanted was potato chips. But you would eat those anyway. No, but I'm telling you, pot gave me the munchies. Do you understand these guys who would smoke at halftime or prior to a game? You know, when I got to the NBA, guys would smoke at halftime, or they'd have a beer at halftime, and I'd be like, what the hell? And they smoking pot at halftime? No, they were smoking, smoking cigarettes. Heaters. Cigarettes. And then drinking beer, or drinking yeah. a beer. Yeah, and I was like, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, and but it was, uh, you know, things have changed. But but I I remember going. Uh, I was with John Barry, and we were at a uh, covering this for uh, the mothership, and walking by a player prior to a game. Yeah, and it was just, just pot was. I mean, he was he was smoking before he got to the game. Yeah, I I don't under. You know, I never understood that. There was this one guy I played with in college. We tried to do an intervention because he smoked pot all the time. And he was a, a one of the best shooters I've ever played with in my life. So, coaches, you you're, know, you're kind of narrowing it down to who this guy is. No, you wouldn't know him. He didn't have him. He never played in the NBA. But he was a wonderful person, but he smoked pot relentlessly. And coach says, you know, I want you guys to do an intervention. We're like, okay. <laughs> so we. So the guy says, okay, I, I, I'll stop smoking pot. Guy couldn't make a shot. So we go back to the coach. We said, Coach, we need him to start smoking pot again. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 this guy could not make a shot off a of pot. It was hilarious. The guys, well, I tell you, I, I'm not even exaggerating there. The guy was one of the best shooters I've ever seen in my life. But when he stopped smoking pot, we went back to the coach. The coach came to us and stopped to get him to smoke pot. I'm like, Coach, he needs pot. This guy cannot make a shot without pot. It was hilarious. Maybe the Knicks need to smoke pot. <laughs> I don't even think pot could help them. Uh, we have a poll question. Okay. 
Uh, McLevin, you want to give Charles the poll question? Whose career would you want? Christian Leitner, great in college, okay in the pros, or Manu Ginobili? Okay, no, don't don't answer it yet. This is called a tease in the business. Okay. All right, so would you rather have Christian Leitner's basketball career or Manu Ginobili's basketball career? Okay. I don't, first of all, I love Christian Leitner, but that's not even a contest. Oh, well, there goes the tease. <laughs> all right. That's not even a contest, Dan. Okay, all right, all right. So, stupid question. Better yet, when we come back, we'll see if uh, Charles and Lonzo Ball and his dad, everybody's playing nice here. LeVar Ball. Now, that's a tease. Okay, Dan. I'll, let, I'll wait till we come back. Okay. We'll talk to Charles about his new best friend. <laughs> who he wants to play one-on-one, LeVar Ball. Uh, coming up on 16 after the hour, this is the Dan Patrick Show. That was an awkward moment there. During no, I like that, though. The live look-in. Uh, uh, what year was it that you stole something out of Barclays' uh, Mercedes, McLevin? I want to say 88. It could have been. Yeah. We lived, uh, Charles lived near me in Lower Marion, Pennsylvania. Yep. And he went to the, you went to the driving range. Charles was at the driving range. Yeah, you uh, remember the City Line driving range? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Charles I, was there often. And uh, I walked by it. I was a huge fan. And it, I don't steal anything. I've never stole anything in my life. That was the only one. And yeah, I'm okay. so sorry. Sure. Yeah, sure. okay. Didn't you steal something out of Michael Jordan's car? <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. Kobe Bryant's that's, car? That's why a lot of people in prison, you, you don't just steal one time. <laughs> you steal until you get caught. <laughs> Nobody steals one time and gets away with it and stops stealing. That's why all these people in prison. But, they, Charles, you had the guy who stole Tom Brady's jersey in the previous Super Bowl when they beat Seattle and then doubles down to steal his jersey in Houston. Well, so, because he, that's point. my point. Yeah. First of all, why did they make a big deal out of the first time he stole the jersey? I don't know what, what happened with Brady that he didn't know that it was there, yeah. that, that it was gone. But he knew that that jersey was gone. Immediately. Right away. Yeah. And that was different. But I, I don't and, know where Brady goes. And see, that's my point, though. He, that ain't the first time he stole anything. Mm-hmm. He didn't stop then. My man <laughs> my man has been, I, they say he stole Von Miller's, too, I think. Oh, yeah, he stole the so helmet. You keep stealing until you get caught. All right, so the poll question you don't like at all, you would take Manu Ginobili's career over Christian Leitner. Well, Christian Leitner is arguably one of the five to ten greatest college basketball players ever. I mean, what he did at Duke. I mean, it's just amazing. But Ginobili, number one, you got to factor in he's won all the championship with the Spurs. And uh, his uh, leading Argentina to the gold medal a couple times. You have to factor that in. But Leitner's one of the great, con- you know, Ginobili is a very, he's a good player on great teams. Yes. Leitner was one of, is one of the great college players of all time. Yes, he is. Like I'm saying, it, it's... It, I think Christian Leitner should be, if he's not already, in the Hall of Fame. He's in the college basketball, but not the basketball Hall of Fame. And honestly, you know, he got he, the only problem he had in the pros, he really doesn't have a position. A lot of guys who, what well, I think people don't understand, there are a lot of guys who are great college players, but don't have a position. Christian is like a 3-4 combo. He's not really quick enough to play the three, and he's not big and powerful enough to play the four position. He'd actually be great in today's game with this, when, it, when it, all these guys are shooting threes. Uh, but first of all, I love Christian. He was great on the Dream Team. Did you guys uh, haze him? Uh, a little bit. You got to haze people. I'm a big believer. When I say haze, I don't mean some of the stuff I see out these crazy high school kids. Yeah. Stuff. Like, you know, even back in the day, uh, Dr. J and Moses Malone, they had me. You walked to the airport with 12 bags on your neck. Andrew Tony had to take him warm milk. <laughs> Like I had to take I had to take them guys newspapers first thing in the morning like seven o'clock, I'm like dude I'm not up at seven. Were well, you up now? Uh, they were great. This though. is your rookie season. This is my rookie season. I had to take them newspaper like seven o'clock in the morning. I had to get out of bed to take them guys newspaper. It really pissed me off. You weren't there with uh, the fight between Bird and Dr. J. I was. Oh, you were. And I really I, to this day I won't ever forgive the NBA for finding me. Because they find me, because they said I was holding Larry Bird so Dr. J oh, could hit him. Oh, that's right. Which was, I was trying to break the fight up. But it looks like you're, you got Bird and you're holding him. I'm trying to, uh, and I, he's thought somebody, I thought somebody had Doc. <laughs> I didn't know Doc was punching Bird when I was holding him. 
Did Bird ever bring that up to you? Uh, no, he didn't. And, he, and, and no. And um, even during the Dream Team, no, because I think he noticed. I was actually, I was. It wasn't like I was hitting Bird. I was just trying to break the fight up. I didn't know Doc was throwing blows at him. The NBA fined me. It really made me mad. They owe me money to this day. <laughs> How much do you think you paid in fines? Three hundred thousand. Oh, probably somewhere in that. I like that. that. But that, you know, Jordan will lose that in a putt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so where where are we with the uh, LeVar Ball relationship now? Oh, his dad. It's dead. His dad is, is, won't let his son enjoy his glory. Because I think, I think his kid is special. He's terrific. Um, I do. I think his kid. I'll tell you what, though. I, I, I said last week. That I probably would take him number one in the draft, but that kid at Kansas, Josh Jackson. Ooh, man! You know, I was talking to Clark Kellogg because Clark, I was no more college basketball than I do. He says, "I said, Clark, how good is this Jackson kid?" He says, "He's the best two-way player." Because hmm. I, because I had said previous that week, I said if I had the number one pick, I might take Ball. He and I said so, but so now. I'm watching, like, the whole game, and I'm like, I don't know, man. I might take Josh first, uh, but he's terrific. But Mr. Ball, first of all, I think he's harmless. If he had a Charles Barkley mentality, maybe he would have averaged 10 points a game at Washington State instead of the, that whole two. Uh, you know, listen, uh, I wish he let his son enjoy this ride. I mean, he's only going to be in college for one year. Yeah. We should be talking about his son. Uh, what a great job, Steve. But don't you think he's doing what he set out to do, and that's create a brand? He has no brand. Well, but he's trying to create a brand. He, you know, Dan, you either have a brand or you don't. The brand's going to be his son. Yeah. You can't talk You can't talk yourself into having a brand. Well, the Kardashians did. Uh, that's a unique situation. Yeah, but this is what, what you, this is what he's trying to do. This is the goal, no, create it, a basketball no, Kardashian his, brand. No, his son is going to be one of the top two or three players in the draft. He's going to get a big shoe deal. That's going to be the brand. This thing he wears, this three the big, big baller. Big baller, yeah. yeah. That's not a brand. Nobody buying stuff because he's wearing it. But I don't know who – why are people going to buy Lonzo Ball shoes? Well, that's not many guys. First of all, I mean, who's buying shoes? They, it's still – Jordan is selling shoes and he hadn't played in – Yeah. It's not many guys uh, – you know, I, listen, he's going to get a big deal. Like John Wall is a great player. Yes. Nobody's buying John Wall shoes. Dude, very few guys can sell shoes. Right? Yeah. I mean, Who so, else sells shoes? I'm pretty sure LeBron is selling shoes. LeBron, KD. KD. Steph Curry. Uh, he's I, trying I, I, to. I don't know enough about Under Armour. He's uh, trying to. Uh, Steph is a, a terrific guy and a terrific player, but I don't know how... That market is going. Yeah, I just don't know. They, they probably would probably help them. They quit making them look like house, hospital shoes. <laughs> oh, those were those were good <laughs> shoes. Those were like orthotics or something. But I will it, tell people this: if you want to be, and, and obviously I'm biased. I think Under Armour is a terrific company. Kevin's done a fabulous job. But if you go back and look at history, the guys who had the most success selling shoes and branding is Nike. Yeah, I would recommend any player, and like I say. Honda Armour's a terrific company. I wish them nothing but the best. Kevin does, has done an amazing job. But if you have to look at from a business standpoint, nobody has done shoes better than Nike. And I've been with the NBA for 30 years. Nobody's done shoes better than Nike. I would recommend if a kid asks me, even if you take less money, you're going to make the money up. If you're going to be a, a global brand shoe-wise, clothing-wise, you should go with Nike. Who would who would have fared better or fared worse uh, back when you played? Uh, if I look at Harden and Westbrook, Steph Curry, Durant, uh, I'll throw in LeBron. But LeBron is so—I mean, he Le would have. LeBron is so great. He, it wouldn't have mattered what generation I mean, that he was in, right? No, because he is. Although you guys would have roughed him up, knowing that he gets—he's a little sensitive to that. You, you know, yeah, if you're yeah, going to bang him around. Well, we. Well, we do. We, that's just part of the game. Physical and physical, being physical is part of the game. They've taken that out. But LeBron, to me, I've always said, hey, listen, uh, LeBron to me is one of the 10 greatest players ever. And people say that I said LeBron was not one of the greatest ever. First of all, not even close to being true. 
What I said was, my top five is never going to change. Michael, Oscar, Kareem, Bill Russell, and Wilt. Nobody ever going to get in my top five. And I said, LeBron is right behind Kobe and Tim Duncan, in my opinion. If he win a couple more championships, maybe even one, I might put him in that category. But right now on my list, he's number eight. And like I say, if he wins a couple more championships, maybe even one, I might move him with Tim and Kobe. That's how great I think he is. I think he's going to end up top five. I think. Well, no, no, and I no, Dan. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, I, mean, I heard what you said. I said nobody can get in my top I, five. I said I think he gets in the top five. In your top five, I'm never going. Listen, uh, my top five is never going to change. LeBron, the best he can get. Why is, are we yelling? You the one yelling, raising your voice at me. You just don't said, have me come to your show and raise you, your voice at you me. You just raise your voice at okay. me. I'm just letting you Did know. Did you hear what I was just saying? <laughs> Do you hear the words coming out well, of my I, mouth? I'm going to go Samuel L. Jackson on you <laughs> yeah, here in a yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> so LeBron, as great as he is, nobody can get in my top five. He can surpass Tim Duncan and Kobe on my – he can get to six. All right. All right. Well, how Would you guys have roughed up Steph Curry? Yes. We would have beat him up. He, what about Kevin Durant? Yes. Banged him around? Yes. Westbrook would have been interesting. Oh, no, though. no, he wouldn't. That, that's a fight you're not looking for. He's, that's a man. Yes, he's a bad You dude. know, if you don't respect and admire Russell Westbrook, that's something wrong with you. And let me tell you something. I've been in this thing for 30 years. I've never seen a player give maximum effort every single night like him. And I'm played against the greats. Wait, even Jordan? Even Jordan didn't play as hard as Russell Westbrook does. And Michael's the greatest of all time. But this guy gives maximum effort every single play, every single night. And you got to respect that. Well, he's one of the few guys I would pay to see play because I don't I I, I would think I'd get my money's worth no, no matter question. what. Right? Yes. And he he just never stops. But I also think Durant leaving gave him that competitive chip on the shoulder. No, he played that like that. He's even bigger he, now. He, no, he I think he you know he played like that. The entire time. Maybe even, like, and, and I hate uh, Kevin left Oklahoma City, uh, number one. Now, does but does this put Russell Westbrook in a tough situation? You can't leave now. You can't go join a team that's got stars because of what, you know, how yeah, we've yeah. been critical with Kevin Durant. Yeah. Right? And, and I don't think he's leaving Oklahoma City. You don't think he'd go to, no. try to go to the Lakers? No, I think that he's made his bed. He's going to do the best he can. He's going to live with the results. And that, that guy, Sam Presti, probably the, uh, other than uh, my man in San Antonio, is probably the best GM uh, in the NBA. Oh, I just got a note from your bosses. Who? Uh, well, I don't want to mention anybody's okay. names. Uh, you can see all the games, March Madness, across TBS, oh, CBS, TNT, uh, and True TV for the seventh straight year with digital access via March Madness Live oh, available on 15 God. different platforms. They are, they are so, no, no, hold on. I'm not done them, yet. They always want them plugs in there. Charles, I'm not done yet. Uh, let me see here. I got to, I got to get the whole promo here. Tonight's games. It'll be, uh, Oregon and Michigan, Gonzaga, West Virginia, Kansas and Purdue and Arizona and Xavier. Now, can we get back to having fun? Yeah. We'll take okay. a break here. Do you have a Jordan story you never told? Think about it. Okay. If you have one. Is this another tease? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll, we'll continue with Charles Barkley. He's just getting his radio thing down. That's a tease. We're back with a Jordan story he's never told before. We all. We were just talking about the uh, Indiana opening, Indiana Hoosiers, and Paulie brought up Billy Donovan and the rumor that maybe he would be interested in that job or they would be interested in Billy Donovan. If you're Billy Donovan and Indiana reached out to you, what would you do, Charles? I think you got to listen. I think you have to listen because uh, you're kind of in no man's land right now. You're not good enough to win the title. You're still coaching in the NBA. I understand that, but, you know. He's already done the college thing. I understand that, but I'm saying, first of all, you have to factor in the back of your mind, like, if Russ leave, oh, boy. That, they won't even be a playoff team, more than likely. Yeah. So I think you have to weigh the pros and cons, but that's a very intriguing question how did they not win with Harden Westbrook and Durant well first of all James Harden wasn't James Harden he was never the best thing that happened first of all I want to say James Harden man 
You you get an MVP vote? No, not not any, not since I don't cover the NBA. Okay, like, who would you vote for? I think Harden's going to win it, but I I I think Westbrook is the most fascinating player in the game. You know, I, I I'm glad I don't have a vote because I would not know who to vote for between Harden and Westbrook. I mean, what what James Harden has done is probably the most impressive thing I've seen from a player who went from here to there. Yeah. Like, he is fantastic. And Mike D'Antoni is an offensive genius. And he just got James Harden as uh, Steve Nash on steroids. But how much credit does D'Antoni get for this style of offense that helped Nash win two MVPs yeah. and has really changed James Harden's game? But you got to give both of them credit. Number one, Mike D'Antoni proved he can coach. But also, James Harden, remember, think about it. Just last year, we like, James Harden never passes the ball. That's true. He is just a ball hog, and this year he's played fabulous. And he doesn't play defense. And he just well, I wasn't a great defender either. First of all, there, there's been a lot of great players who weren't great defenders. I always that's why it drives me crazy when somebody says, uh, you know, this guy if he goes well, he can't, can't guard anybody. And I my thought was, Steve Nash couldn't guard anybody, and he, but who was guarding him? Yes, you know, one of the guys who says something to me, the guy who drafted me to Philly, um, Jack. I forget Jack's last name. I apologize. It's been a long time. And he and I remember, God, I hate I forgot his name. Uh, his name was Jack. He he found me uh, down at Auburn. And he says, the guy's six five. He can't guard anybody. He says, they won't be able to guard him either. <laughs> and uh, Jack McMahon. Man, man. Jack McMahon. God rest his soul. Just a great person. Found me. He said, Charles, they say you can't guard anybody. And I told him, they can't guard you either. So just guard just enough. Bird couldn't guard anybody. No. Uh, but and he's one of the greatest ever. Okay. In your prime, in uh, in their prime, Bird in his prime, LeBron right now, as a teammate, who do you want? I think it'd be amazing to play with LeBron because, number one, he's a better defender, passes just as well, not a great shooter. But he, the, the, I would love to play with a guy like LeBron. Okay. Yeah, because Bird's numbers and at his peak were better than LeBron's. I think uh, MVP season, points, rebounds, assists, and better shooter. He's a uh, at, uh, at age thirty. Bird's numbers were better than LeBron's at age thirty. Well, first of all, in fairness, Bird played with the, the greatest player I played against, Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. And uh, well, LeBron's you know, got Kyrie and Kevin Love. That ain't with McHale and Parrish. No, it's not. Okay. But um, and no, and Bird. Listen, you can't say anything bad about Bird. I mean, he's one of the greatest, greatest ever. But LeBron is just amazing to watch. But Bird didn't talk trash to you. Oh did my he? God, Bird talked trash to everybody. <laughs> but didn't he? Did did he get to a point where I, he had I, respect I, I, for I, you? I always tell this people this story about Larry Bird. I remember him. He was cursing under his breath, and I asked him, I said, "Larry, what's going on with you?" He says. You guys are being disrespectful to me. And I says, what are you talking about? He says, you guys are putting a white guy on me. <laughs> That's disrespectful. Wait, who's the white guy you I, put I, on I, him? I can't remember who it was. I just started laughing. I had no comeback. He says, he says, it's disrespectful when y'all put a white guy on me. And I'm sitting there like, I'm laughing in the middle of a game. He says, and, and, and actually, Michael has said the same thing to me. Uh, before Michael says, "Hey man, y'all being disrespectful. You pissing me off." And I said, "Dude, what are you talking about?" He says, "You got a white guy guard me." I says, "Dan Marley's an all star." Oh man. And he says, "Yeah, but he's a white all star." <laughs> <laughs> all right, give me give me the Jordan story I haven't heard, either on or off the court. I don't have any crazy Michael stories. Uh. Uh. I love Michael like a brother. I miss him a lot. Uh, but I don't – he's always been there for me. Are you uh, stalling right now? Or are you no, just I'm trying, trying to, to figure think. out if you're going to – Every time we have Chris Weber on, Weber has another Michael Jordan story. All our stories involve gambling. Because doing when we played on the Dream Team, me, Michael, Scotty, and Magic played cards every night, all night. I mean, we played cards every night, all night. How much money? Oh, it'd be twenty, thirty thousand dollars on the table. Did you have to pay up? Sometimes, right then. Yeah, you had to pay up. 
That's the best way to remain friends. Pay debt. Who uh, who launched the most? I don't think it, 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 it fluctuates. It fluctuated. But it was awesome. You know, it was really awesome. Uh, just sitting around with those guys. Because the Dream Team, man, it was so amazing. And we didn't know how big it was uh, till it was over. Yeah. And now, all these years later, it was just phenomenal to play with those guys. What it, You were the probably, you averaged the most on the Dream Team, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Did you consider yourself the best player on that team? You know what's interesting about that, Dan? Chuck Daly said to me one time, he said, Charles, I want to talk to you after practice. I'm like, uh-oh, what I do now? And he says, I just want to tell you something. He says, I've been coaching the NBA a long time, and you're the second best basketball player I've seen. And I says, wait, there's somebody better than me? He says, Michael Jordan. I said, Michael Jordan just got help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... And uh, But I tell people, that's the greatest compliment I've ever gotten in my life. Because he says, I get a chance to watch But you. he said that same thing to Bird, too, after practice. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, know, no, no you know, Dan. Uh, Are you better than Bird? Am I better than Bird? Oh, man, that's a great question. I'm a better rebounder. I'm probably a better defender. He's a better shooter, obviously. You know, a, a lot of people talk about who's better. But you have to think, you have to have that mentality. No, no, you know, you know, you know. know. Uh, like, I, if I think, you know, it's it's a team game. Like, Russell Westbrook probably, other than uh, LeBron and, and Kawhi Leonard, he's probably the third best basketball player in the world. But he's not going to win a championship because they just, he don't have enough help. Yeah. I mean, that guy is phenomenal. And there's guys, there's going to be some guys who win championships who can't carry Russell's job. Do you think you're better than LeBron? No, I'm not better than LeBron. Oh, okay. No, I'm not better than LeBron. But you think you're better than Bird? I don't, I think it, uh, I, I do things better than him. Yeah. But if I, you give me Parrish and McHale and DJ, I'm going to be all right. You better than Duncan? No. Tim Duncan's the greatest power forward ever. He had a lot of help. He did, but he was dominant. But he did, what's he do better than you? Uh, he's a better post-up player because he because it's easier for him to score. Like yeah, but you were a better scorer. Uh, only because I got the ball more. You got to understand something. There's guys. See, there's some there's some guys uh, who's we call them studio gangsters. They on a bad team and average a lot of numbers. He's just the best player on a bad team and get the ball more. Give me an example. Oh, uh, not doing that. Though. Oh, okay, my bad. You know, you know what's interesting? I'll give you this, this analogy. I was a much better player in Philadelphia than I was in Phoenix. But when you give me Dan Marley, Kevin Johnson, Mark West, Sabalos, and those guys, I had more team success. Yeah. You know, uh, but I was a much better player in Philadelphia than I was in Phoenix. I won MVP because I had Dan Marley, Kevin Johnson, Mark West, and those guys. I didn't vote for you. Uh, well, I, you should have. No, you, I voted for Jordan. And you should have voted for me the year they screwed me in Philadelphia <laughs> when I when I lost to Magic Johnson as the, in the closest vote ever. I got screwed that year because I got all the first place votes and no other votes. You better than Magic Johnson? No, I don't. No, I'm not better than Magic Johnson. Okay. Dan, I'll be straight with you. No, no, I. But I appreciate yeah. that. You better than Isaiah? Uh, it's, that's hard right there because he's, it, cause I think, and he's probably to me one the most underrated little guy. Did he ever fight with you? No, he's always been great to me. And he's fun to work with now, but he's probably the most underrated great player ever. Okay. He, to me, it, like when people talk about like John Stockton is great. You better I, than Malone? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And he's a great player, but. Isaiah Thomas, you know, you take you look at Iverson, Stockton, now Steph Curry. Isaiah's better than all those guys. Isaiah's better than Steph. Yes. And Steph is a great player now, but he's not better than Isaiah Thomas. Who would you want as your point guard? Isaiah Thomas. In today's game? Isaiah Thomas. 
Yes. He might be even better in today's game. He would be better. Right? Yeah, he would be much better today. Yeah. I mean, they, un they unmade it. I mean, they might as well have flags out there, like flag football. <laughs> you, know you can't touch anybody, can't breathe on anybody. Yeah, yeah and you know what? Bird couldn't take down Shaq. So, oh. right? But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's... Could you take down Shaq now? Come on, man. You ever <laughs> seen a guy fight? <laughs> Shaq? Yeah, no. You ever <laughs> seen him win a fight? <laughs> Shaq can't fight a lick. I hit him in that big old gut. Because I can't, I can't reach his you big old get... head. So I hit him in the gut, and that gut, and then it'll bring him down. And then when he come down, I clock him. Uh, it's great to have you, man. Oh, uh, man, thank you thank for having you. me, man. Hey, hey, listen. Thank you. Next time, we're coming to your house in Arizona. You come on. I tell you we're what. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do a show from your backyard. I tell you what I'm gonna do, man. I really number one. I tell you this all the time. I'm so happy for your success. Thank you, man. Because you're a good guy. You know, there's guys I root for, and you've been successful for a long time, even going back to the mothership, and you continue successful. And I'm happy for you. Your guys are terrific, and uh, you know what we should do for ratings. <laughs> oh, no. I see you got all these TVs on. Yeah. Like, if, if I get a disease and I'm going to die, how about I bring you get Skip Bayless in here and I kill him live on national television? I like it. Yeah. I like pay-per-view. Yeah. No, no, no. No, just get him in here. Okay. Because, you know, and then, okay. and I'll like, I, only when I know I'm going to die. Fritzy, can we set this up? Yeah. Let, I don't see why now, not. But just yeah. let us know in advance. Because I just want to get Skip Bayless in a room one time and just beat him like a dog. Okay. So you'd, you'd kill him. Yes. Okay. Only if I knew I was going to Only if you were going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, if I'm going to live, I don't want to be in prison because... As my horn say, they would love you in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Barkley and uh, the coverage on uh, TBS, TNT, CBS. Yeah, uh, t CBS and TBS, I think, are the last two standing. Tonight. Yes. With more from Charles. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.